And it's hard to believe, but we're almost two weeks away from the start of the Atlantic hurricane season. Americans are being urged to prepare for about a half dozen major storms this season. But three years after hurricanes Irma and Maria, the Puerto Rican government is still concerned about the impact of the next big one. And joining us tonight from the uh, Center for Latin American Studies at the University of Florida is Dr. Carlos Suarez. Dr. Suarez, welcome. Thanks for having me. Those storms that we've talked about, and they pull the curtain off of these socioeconomic and political factors that contribute to aggravating the problems caused by hurricanes in Puerto Rico. How much progress has been made since then? At this moment, the situation that is facing is where uh, over a total of $49 billion were approved by Congress, but at this point, around $15.3 billion have been disbursed or uh, on the way to being disbursed because of uh, differences between Republicans and Democrats. So that's the aspect of Capitol Hill and, and the White House. In terms of what happens on the island, a, a great deal of uh, mismanagement and to be frank, sometimes incompetency has led to great dissatisfaction in, in the Puerto Rican public that partially led to the ousting of, of Rosselló during last summer's protests. So a, kind of a double whammy going there. And I, I will say that uh, Puerto Rico is one of my favorite places in the world. My wife and I honeymoon there. I've been there many, many times. I'm wondering, uh, has the island been able to recover from uh, the big hit in 2019? Uh, to a certain extent, once the hurricane happened, uh, the island has been facing a set of other challenges. The political one that I mentioned, about uh, the governor being ousted. Also, uh, early uh, 2020, late 2019, the southwestern part and south part of the island have been facing a number of uh, earthquakes and tremors and the highest ranging 6.5 uh, give and take. So to be frank, the island has faced political, natural uh, disasters, and also in the bigger picture, Part of the difficulties of addressing Hurricane Maria in 2017 was the fact that the island has been on a significant uh, situation of great debt. And uh, the island wasn't in the best of conditions to respond efficiently in areas, particularly uh, as power, the provision of power, and having to receive aid from the US power companies, etc. So the situation now is one of slow movement, but it certainly hasn't been ideal. And in a political level, it will be interesting if uh, the elections coming in November of this year, will the governor of the same ruling party, will they be able to uh, stay in power or will the people uh, act uh, through voting and oust them down, oust them out basically because of the, the response? So now that we're also dealing with coronavirus, if Puerto Rico were to get hit by a big storm, uh, also under these, you know, the situation that we're under now, uh, how critical could that become? It's a significant challenge because now it, the, the COVID-19 situation compounds an already political, economic, and a and, and natural uh, situation of, of significant stress. So it, 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 in, in a political sense, when we take a look at this, the thing that comes to mind is government response. What type of response? And also, will there or has then there been any political accountability for the management of COVID-19, the hurricane, and the other events that have happened? To a certain degree, uh, for the first time ever, a governor was ousted while in office. We'll see what happens now in November. Certainly, the issue of accountability comes to mind in terms of a really uh, disappointed public on the island. Dr. Suarez, thank you so much for your insights, and uh, we're, we're hoping for the best this hurricane season. It's going to be a busy one, and we hope uh, Puerto Rico Thanks, is spared. Thanks for having me and for your good wishes. Thank you. Be thank safe, you. sir.